so good morning, everyone. Welcome to day two. Um, I hope you had a fun night last night at the cocktail. I know we have a bunch of new people here with us today, which is exciting. You're very welcome. Uh, you haven't missed much. So today and tomorrow will be a lot of uh, updates from the community. This is essentially our show and tell. This is where we get the community gets to show us what they've been working on for the last couple of months. And <coughs> that also feeds into a process on uh, Friday where we talk about the product road roadmap and the direction we want the product to go. So maybe to set the tone for the product stuff and the work stream updates, Paul, over to you. Thanks, Simeon. Um, very sorry not to be able to be with you though today. It's uh, it's a it's a great uh, sorrow for me not to um, not to be able to talk to you all face to face, but we are where we are. So uh, today we're we're doing some readouts from the work streams that um, that we've been working on over the last PI and previously. If I can just share my uh, screen, um, I wanted to show you. Uh, I hope you can see my screen now. Yes, you can. Um, yes, we can. I wanted to emphasize that uh, all of our work in the in the last PI has been focused on this model of the three pillars and the um, the underpinning foundation of a quality product. And the three pillars are first pillar, make it easier to deploy MojoLoop. So that so that's about making it easier for people to get MojoLoop up and running be it in a testing environment, a development environment, or in a production environment. Secondly, the second pillar is to actually help people achieve scale once they have a, a live deployment going. Um, so it's all the value add services that you need to actually uh, make sure that your service is profitable. And the third pillar is that let's um, make sure that we can connect to other systems in a payment sequence ecosystem uh, as easily as possible. It's a recognition of the fact that Mojuloop doesn't exist in isolation. We have to be able to connect to other services as well. Um, today, we're gonna focus on the first two pillars, making adoption easier and achieving scale. And we'll have more to say on that as, as we go through the day. Um, there's uh, um, two things I wanted to say in, in addition to that. First of all, um, Friday is our road mapping day where we review progress against the roadmap. Um, all, all of these work streams are on the roadmap and we have to make sure that we are um, uh, all heading in the right direction. So let's review the progress against the roadmap and see what we need to do for the next PI and roadmap planning for PIs beyond that so that we can look out 12, 18 months, two years in our roadmap. Um, to that end, I would very much appreciate it over the next day, day and a half, people could think about work streams that we haven't addressed so far that we should be bringing, bringing onto the roadmap and addressing either the, in the next PI or the one after that. So it's essentially a call for nomination of work streams. So if you can do some thinking about that, and if you can let me know um, beforehand via Slack, Paul Makin on the Slack channel, or via email, or if you can tell um, Simeon or Steve or something, uh, or someone else, uh, the work stream that you think we should be addressing that we're not addressing now, and give some thought to how long it might take and the, and the complexity of it. And if you can share that with, with us one way or another, we can discuss it on Friday um in this in this forum and we can decide whether we're going to uh, put it on the roadmap or not and this if we are doing where it should fit and we could start thinking about resourcing and um acceptance criteria etc cetera, etc cetera, on friday but beyond as well um in the product council calls um so the first session today is all about pillar one making adoption easier um, so I just wanted to, to show you something that I have, wasn't able to do at the last convening. I'm really, really impressed with myself and let's be honest, the work of the teams uh, that are with you today um, and uh, enabling me to do this. And if I can just find the right window in all this lot, because as ever, we all have loads of windows. Here we are. I'm connected to a deployed instance of Mojo Loop. It's deployed in Ubuntu. And I've got the testing toolkit running. 
I can actually, I'm actually running Mojo Loop here, and I can run the the uh, TTK and the mobile simulator. And um, to me, okay, it's it's not it's not amazing to many of you, but I've been working with uh, Mojo Loop for two and a half, three years now, and this is the first time I've been able to remotely run Mojo Loop, get it deployed, and start running TTK and the simulators on it. Uh, I'm impressed, even if no one else is. So um, congratulations to everyone on the Pillar 1 team, the TTK team. Um, it's it, it's amazing progress. And um, if that's what we've been able to do, focused on the last PI, I think what we can do over the, the next PI and beyond. So with that, um, I'll just emphasize again, um, uh, if you can send me uh, it, details of any work streams you think we should be focusing on for the next few PIs, I'd be very grateful. Uh, let's widen the scope. Let's move it beyond the usual suspects in nominating uh, work streams. Uh, let's make this truly a, a, a truly more expansive community effort. So thank you, and I'll hand back to Simeon. Thanks so much, Paul. Awesome. So uh, today you've got a bit of a to-do list. So on your notepad and the pens uh, next to you, just write down the first to-do list. If you've got any proposals for the uh, product roadmap for a new work stream, please pass it over to, you can send it on Slack to Paul or talk to Steve Haley or myself and we'll make sure that that's part of the discussion on Friday. Right, uh, I want to give a quick community update. Um, and we'll do this in two, as usual, in two different levels. All the stats and the recognition will happen on Friday, so stick around for that. We actually have some very fancy limited edition swag for our active com community members. Uh, but today I want to focus on a couple of things. So, four things, really. I want to cover with you the community objectives, what we as a community council has decided to do for the rest of this year, and your input in there. Then I want to talk about open source culture a bit um, in relation to how we are working in the community and make a couple of proposals that I think is worth everyone in our community, you guys, uh, spending some time thinking about. Then uh, we will be making two announcements today, one of the Mojuloop Speaker Bureau, and the second thing is Mojuloop Community Central. So let's get to it. Um, the Community Council spent some time, usually at the beginning of every year, figuring out what we want to do um, for the rest of the year. Um, and we have one of the co-chairs of the Community Council uh, with us, uh, Innocent Kawoya. If you want to come up and just quickly uh, give everybody an overview of what we're doing or what we plan to do this year. Uh, Innocent leads uh, high people. Uh, really good advocacy organization for Mojo Loop and the level one principles. Thank you, Simeon. I was about to clap for myself. <laughs> uh, good morning. I'm very excited to see all of us here. Uh, thank you for your commitment in making this a reality. I remember in 2018, it was just a few of us. And now we have an overflow of participation. And you should clap for yourselves. It's a big thing. Um, first of all, we never had the chance to in person thank any of you for voting us into office. I've been privileged to serve as courtier for the second time in three years. I'm a big deal, yeah? I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, sometimes I want to tell myself, oh my God, I'm a big deal. But thank you. It's because of you that we actually make it to these positions. But any leadership position is so much responsibility. So we don't take it lightly. And we want to do something that we believe will make a difference for all of us. So I wanted to make sure I take a minute to thank all of you because it's because the community votes and the community council then votes the co-chair. Fortunately, I'm the only one they vote on our side. Simeon is, is an automatic uh, African leader that doesn't need your vote. So um, 
I thank uh, the community council and the team that is making a number of amazing deliberations to making this community a better place for all of us. But most importantly, I know Simeon will, will do a lot of talking about what is on the spreadsheet, you'll forgive me. I really wanted to talk to all of us about uh, making effort to make sure we multiply our numbers as a community by 10 times uh, by the time it is October this year, because I believe we all can do it. And if it's not us, then nobody can do it. So I wanted to set a challenge for all of us, each one of us that is here, everyone that is online, to make time and invite 10 people that you know that need what we have as information and resources in the community, in the Moja Loop community. Like each one of us invites 10 people. So if it's a, a thousand of us, we will have 10,000 people invited by October. And I promise to come with a present for the one who will invite the most people. A very amazing present. But it's a challenge for all of us. I know there are so many of our folks, our colleagues, family and all that that don't even know about Moja Loop yet. Yet the work that is being done in this community is already changing so many lives. So I implore every one of us, starting with myself and Simeon, for us we shall invite 100 each of us. So please invite 10 and may God bless you. Thank you so much. Excellent. Um, it's probably very important that I invite the community council members in the room to kindly stand. Um, we have quite a number here. All the community council members in the room. Excellent. A round of applause for them. There's Jane, there's Warren, and there's Ed Cable. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Um, this is the community council is a representative governing body of the entire community. So they essentially represent your voice and opinion. If you've got something that's on your mind, those are the people to go to and they'll bring your agendas up to the community council. The community council has sort of distilled its focus this year into three um, items. One is the community dimensions and strategy, just figuring out how to create a sustainable uh, ecosystem around Moja Loop. And these include the deliverables like we plan to do a community survey, we've done this before, uh, and come up with an engagement strategy for the various groups within our community. We also are taking a hard look at the community council's practical responsibility. Essentially, we're asking ourselves, what should the community council be doing? And we'd like to hear from you so that we can have that in mind. And, uh, and the goal there is to influence and expand uh, community growth and engagement. So we've got stuff going on like we, some of you are aware and participated in updating the community council charter. We're thinking through community-led initiatives and programs um, just to make sure that there's opportunity for everyone in the community to engage and participate in growing our community. And then lastly, the thing that Innocent mentioned, which is the growth of open source contributors. Um, we are actively looking for more people to contribute uh, to the Moodle Loop code base. And there are a couple of items in there that we're thinking about doing, including uh, updating the contribution guidelines, uh, figuring out the on contributor on onboarding process, uh, community outreach events, and other initiatives uh, as such. So if you've got any opinions or any strong ideas, please feel free to approach any of the community council members. Uh, some I believe are on Zoom as well, and some of them are here. Uh, please let us know your thoughts. Um, they don't represent themselves, they represent you. So it's important that you have this discussion with them and talk to them. Let's talk about Moodle Loop and open source culture. When I was hired at the Moodle Foundation, um, one of the first things I, am, I started doing is creating a structure, a governance structure, to sort of clearly define the dimensions of the community. That's how we ended up with a redone design authority, change control board, and community council. We've got work streams, we've got a product process. Now, this isn't perfect, but it has been necessary and has helped us get make it easier for people to engage and participate. But one of the, I was looking at um, culture versus governance. We, we have certain cultures in our community. For example, one of the strongest cultures we have is everything, decisions are made by consensus. And we've seen this strongly across all the community governance boards. 
in typical open source, we've got a, a principle, a code wins arguments. Some of you who've been in open source long enough would recognize it in this statement. Sorry. Uh, this is actually a summary of uh, what Linda Strovald said a long time ago, talk is cheap, show me the code. And the emphasis is, are we able to, rather than just spend endless days in meetings and on Slack arguing or talking about a certain issue, it's important that we see and, you know, some code and see does it work and, ha and use that as a basis of conversation. So, yeah, instead of debating for days whether a new idea is possible or what the best way to build something is, developers would rather just prototype something and see what works. Usually that helps us get going. Now, the problem with this is, with this statement, code wins arguments, is that it implies an argument and it also means there's a win for developers who write code and a loss for somebody else. And I've spent quite a bit of time observing how our community engages and, and, and how they come to decision making. Um, and I've decided it's not a good thing that one party wins and the other one loses. So I've scoured around the internet and spent sleepless nights on this topic. And I think a better statement to create a win-win situation for everyone is not code wins arguments, but code moves us forward. It's important that even in our discussions, it's great to see code, and that forms the basis for any discussions or any decisions that we're gonna go forward. What does that look like? It's a sort of, in our development process, we should sort of bake in the idea of, or a stage that says, let's build and see, or do some experimentation. Now, this brings us some problems, and I've got solutions for them. Two problems, primarily. Sometimes, uh, when, we, when people go off on their own and they send up and they're working on a little project, it takes away, um, first of all, it's a few people rather than, the, rather than the entire community working on it. And then two, sometimes the wider team or the community isn't in the picture and sometimes uh, it, the community does lose ownership. And that I've observed has created some conflict sometimes in our community. So what are the solutions? One, trust. I think it is okay to a certain extent to trust our colleagues, to trust ourselves, the people in this room, um, by letting go when it's necessary, but not for too long. Um, we can send off, we can be in the design authority and say, I've got this idea, and we can tell them, okay, why don't you go work on it for two weeks, build a prototype, and then come back and tell us what you're doing. And this would then time box the project and clearly mark that project as an exploration so that we know you're not doing your own things by yourself, but we know that you're taking some time, we've baked in the, in the process, some time to experiment or to prototype, and then come back to the community and say, hey, I tried this thing, this is how it works, what do you think? And when it's time boxed, it allows, um, it still allows people to have the space to experiment, but still gives the wider community a bit more ownership of the experimentation process or whatever it is that you're doing and oversight over it. And three, I think we need to communicate that this experimentation or this prototyping when it is required um, supports the project as a whole. So one of the asks I have for this group is to think about this statement. Sorry, can't, not sure what's going on. How code can move us forward and what that might look like in our work streams, in our community governance meetings. Um, it's not up to me to make the decision. That's entirely your, uh, your role. And I hope that the work stream leaders and the community governance um, leaders here can you know, give it some thought and try and figure out how we can embed this as a culture, not as a governance principle, but as a culture in our community. So that said, Okay, now I understand why people are struggling with this yesterday. Come on, there we go. Let's go to the next thing. Um, I am very happy to announce today the Mojo Loop Speaker Bureau. So what is the Mojo Loop Speaker Bureau? It's essentially a group of people 
some of you in our community who are approved by the Mojulu Foundation to speak about Mojulu at various conferences and events around the world. This idea came up in December last year from Steve Haley and we then took it to the community council and the community council spent quite a considerable, considerable amount of time uh, hashing this out and you know, creating this program. So the ownership of this uh, Mojulu Speaker Bureau is co-owned by the Mojulu Foundation and the Mojulu Community Council. So what are the goals we have here? We want you or we want Mojo Loop to participate in more events across a wider geography. Um, usually, as at now, um, most of our speaking engagements is usually Paula, Steve, um, Costa, and Miller sometimes. Um, and that's about it. But we realize there are many of you who are very able and capable of representing Mojo Loop, uh, the project and the community, in various speaking engagements around the world. So we want to make that opportunity available to you. Um, we want people to be able to speak, not just generally about Mojulu, but also on specialized topics. Some of the things that you're working on in the, in the work streams. So that's something to give some thought. We also want to provide visibility for some of the members and independent platforms away from larger community, larger, um, community members. And also we want to provide speaking opportunities in a less ad hoc fashion mm -hmm. and provide more transparency and opportunity to you guys to who would like to speak on Mojo Loop, uh, on behalf of the Mojo Loop Foundation. So how does this work? Um, this is not all the information. Don't worry, this information will be up online and you can go and pour through the details. But in summary, the Speaker Bureau will have an annual application process and this application will be vetted by the Mojo Loop Speaker Bureau Committee. That committee includes Mojo Loop staff, um, two people who are working on the PR uh, team by virtue of they manage the, pub, the publicity for the Mojo Loop Foundation. Uh, it includes uh, Steve Haley, uh, Desire Kachenje, Paul Makin, and myself. So this is the program committee that will vet the applications. And once, applications, once that committee has come up with a list, the final list will be approved by the Mojo Loop Foundation Executive Director. So by chance you make your application and you're in, you will serve a term of 18 months and you can reapply to join the Speaker Bureau. So for 18 months, you're more than welcome to speak for, as we find speaking engagements, um, wherever they are in the world, um, we'd be more than happy to make sure that you're given that opportunity to present. Uh, this Speaker Bureau list is going to be published. It's gonna be publicly available on Mojulub Community Central. I will tell you what that is in two minutes. And we will grant you the official title of member of the Mojulub Foundation Speakers Bureau just to spice up your LinkedIn profile a little bit. Uh, then, how do we, how does, how does the speaking engagements part of this work? The engagements will be awarded on a first on the basis of expertise, and then second on the basis of geographic vicinity. And the speakers in the bureau will be categorized by topic type. You could be speaking on awareness, you could be speaking on business or market development, on tech, and then by the level of expertise in each category. So each speaker in the speaker bureau will have some sort of ranking and categorization. Uh, speakers will be selected for speaking by the program committee and approved by Paula, the executive director of the Moodle Foundation. Now, anyone at any point in time can propose speaking opportunities to the Mojulu Foundation. We are already actively looking for speaking engagements, but of course, we don't have a proper visibility on what the opportunities are around the world. So if you see a conference or a speaking opportunity and you're like, this is something I can probably do, you're more than welcome to send it to us and it goes into the speaker bureau process and we can find either you or the right person to speak at that engagement. Uh, it's important to note that proposing a speaking opportunity does not guarantee selection as a speaker for that opportunity, but definitely preference will be given. So if you've got a list of speaking engagements, uh, send them over to us. Um, there's an email address that you'll see in the, in the materials online and that process will kick off. Right, the Mojo Loop Speakers Bureau applications for 2023 and 2024 will open next week. So be sure to be subscribed on our newsletter, check the blog post, check our socials. It's something that we will heavily advertise. So everything's ready to go. Um, so around Monday and Tuesday next week, all this stuff will be out there 
and you'll have an opportunity to apply. Great opportunity? Awesome. Excellent. I'm glad you like it. Last thing. Um, come on. Come on. There we go. I am happy today to announce Mojulub Community Central. What is it? It is, come on, come on, come on, come on, patience. Okay. It's on. Yeah, it is on. There we go. Um, if you navigate right now to community.mojulub.io, this is what you will see. This is the new single source of truth for everything that has to do with the Mojulub community, and you have access to it today. The Mojulub Community Central is essentially a forum board on steroids. Um, you people can use this as your engineering blog. You can use this as updates for your company. You can tell us if you've got wins. We can celebrate it on there. Um, you will find minutes of the various community governance boards up here. If you've got an idea, like uh, Paul Macon suggested for a product um, idea, you can post it there and people can have discussions there. This is your space. This is where all the discussions that happen in our community, open, publicly available, all of it sits here. So it does take quite a bit of time to populate, but it's very easy, it's very open. If you want to join our community, the way to do it is by clicking the create account button on the top right corner up there, and you should be well on your way. And we've got, we've baked in a couple of onboarding processes and everything, so it's gonna be great. It's mostly organized by threads and by tags. So whenever you create a post, please make sure you tag it. Um, on the right side there, we've got a couple of suggested tags, newbie, help, mini loop, DAs, design authority, events, and uh, under each of those tags, you can see various threads or various discussions. So you could be running the ISO 200022 work stream. Uh, if you go to Community Central, you will find uh, ISO 200022 tag. And when you click on that, you'll see all the content in our community or what everybody else is discussing uh, regarding the, that particular topic. If you wanna see what events we're having or you're having, you can click on the events tag and you can see what people are doing or what's coming up. Um, if you want to know what High People is up to in terms of the outreach and advocacy work, you can click on the High People tag and everything is there. Now, every person has an individual profile, but one of the things we've also baked in here is we now have organizational profiles. So you could have your organization and you can post on behalf of your organization and in case you want to have um, a formal notice or a formal announcement, this would be the place to do it. So I do encourage you to, right now, literally, um, go to community.mojaloop.io and check it out, and that's where we'll hang out. Now, this has a few implications for some of the tools we already use. We heavily use Slack. Uh, Slack has been a bit of a pain to get into and to navigate. So in the coming months, we will be slowly moving Slack away from, we will change how we use Slack. Um, Slack will now be primarily focused on work stream conversations. Um, and yeah, and that's a, a level of depth that you know matters to those that matters. But we wanted this to be publicly open and available to anyone and all, one of the principles of open source and one of the uh, initiatives we have uh, called Working Open Initiative, and just make sure everything is public. Um, eventually, you'll start to see stuff on there like the uh, public calendar, which has a list of all Mojaloop uh, Foundation and Mojaloop Community meetings. Um, there are some of those meetings that are publicly available to anyone to join. Uh, the instructions will be on that calendar. It's just the single source of truth. Now, this isn't a a page that the Mojulu Foundation manages. This is a page that you manage and populate. If you've got any ideas, any threads, anything that you think is relevant and would help the wider community, literally just send me an email. We'll get whatever you want up on there. So whatever this grows to become is determined by you, not by the Mojulu Foundation. 
So I look forward to having your engagement um, and your activity on there. Um, there's also a mobile app and a bunch of other things. It's a really great space. So um, this is something that we've been working on for a while and I'm quite happy to announce it. So yeah, enjoy it. Um, yeah, yes, please clap for me. I'd appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. So um, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, you have a to-do list. Remember the one that we started with Paul Macon? The first thing on that list should be, um, if you've got an idea for a work stream, um, you need to give it to us today and latest tomorrow so that we can discuss that on Friday as we determine the work streams for the next for this PI. Um, and in addition to that list, you can post, um, sorry, on the product idea, uh, feel free to post your proposed work streams in Community Central. Um, just use the product tag and you should be good to go. Um, sign up at Community Central and there is a welcome thread in there. That's literally the very first thing you should do. Go into the welcome, welcome thread. There's a couple of, there's a template in there. Just fill it out, click post. We want to know who you are, what you're doing, how we can help you. Um, it's awesome. Uh, look out for the Modulo Speaker Bureau announcement um, launch. That will happen early next week. Um, do consider applying. Uh, many of you are great speakers. Um, we want to see your voices out there representing and advocating for Mojo Loop. Uh, I'll talk to community council members about the objectives for 2023. Make sure your voice is heard. The community council represents you. So make sure that your input and feedback is included in there. And you can do this all year round. That's fine. Go to Community Central, use the COCO tag, C-O-C-O. Uh, everything you post there goes straight to the Community Council and we're monitoring it and we're happy to uh, have an agenda in there as well. And then take a, th a serious think about culture. What would a code moves us forward culture look like in our community work streams or governance? If you've got any thoughts or any opinions, post it on Community Central, let me know. Let's have this discussion. Let's figure out how to strengthen our community. That's it. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>